So lately I've taken up scraping, and I'm still a good few years away from being any good at it, so you guys are gonna have to go easy on me. But, having already experimented with a few homemade scrapers, I've come to the realization that having a way to sharpen them, and keep them sharp, is crucial to getting a good result. And that's why I decided to build this thing, my own little slow speed diamond grinder. Part 1. Some Diamond Lapping Discs Now these are just the cheap imports that you can find by searching for diamond polishing discs. Here I've got the 600 grit for roughing in, the 1200 grit for finishing, and the 3000 grit for polishing the edges. Now these are already a little dirty as you may have noticed from me testing them out, so a quick tip to keep them clean is to use a solvent like benzene or mineral spurts to keep them from getting clogged with the carbide dust. Part 2. Some form of spinny rotational device. Now for diamond grinders I've read that slow speed is best, somewhere in the region of 2 to 300 rpm for a 6 inch wheel like I'm using. So, to get that speed, you really have two basic options. First, and most easily available, is an AC motor. These can be really easy to find and repurpose. These can be quite powerful, and you don't need any special way to run them. Now, the biggest downside to using an AC motor is that they require a large and bulky speed reduction to bring them down to the lowest speeds required. This can add a lot of bulk to the machine, like you can see here. And, even if you go with something like an AC motor with a gearbox, you can see this is still a pretty bulky solution. Now a much easier alternative is to go with an already compact DC motor with a drive reduction system already built in. And of course these can most commonly be found in the form of your neighbor's windscreen wiper motor. Now at about 65 RPM, wiper motors are actually a tad slow for what we need, but they do offer a number of key advantages. Number one, they're relatively easy to obtain. They're small and have a compact drive system, so they're easy to package, and they have two different speeds. In this case, this one has a slow and a fast setting, and their direction can easily be reversed by reversing the polarity, you know, since you'll be using a DC power supply. Now, the one big disadvantage is that they are going to need a dedicated DC power supply to run them. I recommend something in the region of perhaps 5 amps. Now, the two biggest downsides to using a wiper motor is that they only have these splined and tapered shafts, which are difficult to adapt to. And they have these three weird mounting points which don't make life any easier either. But hey, that's what machine shops are for. To overcome the first challenge, I made this tapered shaft on the lathe. It was a bit tricky to copy the taper with such a short run and with the splines on it to boot, but it seemed to be about 10 degrees. As a side note, I didn't quite have a boring bar small enough to cut this taper, so I improvised and used a 6mm two flute end mill to quite decent effect. I also tapped the shaft so that the threads would draw the taper in and lock everything together. Okay, now if I put the whole casing on and I tighten it up, you can see that I still have the ability to move the shaft without bottoming against the casing. So that's a good thing. And this brings me to part three, a body to hold everything together. Now this part is what's going to possibly vary the most machine to machine. It might be simple or it might be really complicated, depending on your motor. In my case, I'm using the body both to mount the wiper motor with its weird mounting feet and to hold a recessed ball bearing. Now the bearing will help counteract the grinding forces that this thing is going to see because older wiper motors generally just have the shaft riding on a plain journal bearing which often has a lot of play. Hence having a ball bearing to support the shaft can really help. Now as a side note, I used the end mill as a boring bar trick again just because I needed more rigidity in this particular setup. It really does work quite well though. I suggest you give it a try. Part 4. The Platin. 
Okay, now for the next bit, I think I'm gonna go ahead and work on this nifty little flange that I found as an extra, and that's gonna cut down on a lot of work that I was gonna do. Initially, I had planned on turning a platen down from some 20 millimeter thick aluminum stock, but as you can see, having a flange already ready-made for me allows me to make a separate platen out of some five more mild steel, or maybe this convenient but dirty plate of three millimeter mild steel. I think adding these two together and mating them up should actually work quite nicely. That'll save me a lot of time. Let's get to that. There's that little boring bar being used again, and a nice snug fit. The next to hammer in the drive pins and seat the magnets, and we have a nice little quick change drive mechanism. Maybe I should have used the aluminium though, as this plate wasn't quite straight enough. It's not pretty, but it'll work. And schwack. Yeah, that's actually pretty good. The only downside to using magnets though is that your scraper will often get magnetized and collect all the little chips that you scrape off. So some kind of demagnetizer might be required. Part five, the tilting tool rest. This one goes from minus five degrees to 45 degrees. Though adjustability is not strictly necessary for sharpening scraper blades, since a fixed five degree angle is all you really need, it does make the machine a lot more versatile for sharpening other things like lathe tools and carbide inserts. As a side note, I made these angled slots quite simply by drilling them out and then very carefully conventional milling them with some resistance by bolting that plate down. You have to be careful to only use conventional or push milling. Going the other way, you'll quickly notice we'll try and pull the part from your hands and break the cutter and the setup and possibly you too. So proceed with caution. Part six, the base to tie all the features together. So here I just used some square tubes stick welded together, nothing overly fancy, but obviously the straighter the better. Now the position of the mounts for that rotating table are going to be much more important to get right. And of course, a nice coat of paint never hurt anything either. Now one other major feature I had in mind for this was to be able to change the plates out without disturbing the angle I had set for the table. The downside though is that you end up with this huge gap that wants to suck up small inserts. I suppose a sliding plate on top of that table would actually help solve that problem. Hmm, maybe I should add that. Part seven, it's alive. Now one last thing is to talk about the power supply. Now, if you used a single phase AC motor, you don't have to worry about this. But a quick hack is to use a cheap power supply from a PC. I ended up just using this one and mounting it straight to the base. This one's capable of about 450 watts and 15 amps, so it'll be more than enough as we saw you only really need about 5 amps. Alright now, but what if you have a power supply and it just doesn't start? Well, to do this all you're going to need is a little jumper. This is a jumper wire that I've just soldered the two ends so that they don't fray and they can act more like pins than like loose wires. We're going to jump it between back and the only green wire on the entire loom. And of course that would be the power switch on your PC. So there you go, a slow speed grinder. It can be as simple or as complicated as you want to make it, but a good repeatable way to quickly sharpen scraper blades can really make the task of scraping that much more bearable and will probably really help in the long run to keep you sane. So I am very glad I made this one and I've already been using it for quite a while. And I gotta say, I am very happy with the results. I've already used it to sharpen a number of things around the shop and I'm gonna love using this thing. So anyway guys, I have been Markow and thank you so much for watching. Consider subscribing if you liked the video, maybe leave a like and a comment about what you thought of the build and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Cheers.